Hey guys, so I'm here with my uh, my my hunting buddy, Theodore. Now we're not hunting for squirrels today. We're actually out at the antique shop again. He's got a day out of school because of his, uh, he had some oral surgery done. You feeling all right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're going to take our time and we're going to hunt for some, hopefully, 1920s, 1930s uh, gear, equipment, or, or some things that we can use for our living history displays out in the wild. You excited? Yeah. All right, so wish us luck, and you're on the journey. Let's take a look. All right, so not too long into it, we, a lot of these antique stores, they'll have, like, a, an outside place where some of, like, the um, the stuff, they don't care if it gets stolen or it's cheaper stuff, you know, yard sale kind of things. And uh, we found a pretty big camp kettle here. Now, what's interesting about, you know, aluminum ware, if you're trying to find aluminum ware, you want the right gauge. See if I can get this right because of that light in the background. The the right gauge of aluminum uh, for the kettle. So this one here is made by Wherever. Now you've probably heard me in my previous videos talk about Wherever. But uh, Wherever was a, a well-known, well-established, early 20th century um, aluminum manufacturer. And in the early 20th century, aluminum prices went way down because the technology to produce aluminum uh, finally stepped it up. Before that, like aluminum was pretty expensive. Think of like how much titanium is today. It's a pretty precious metal. Now this has got a wooden handle. So that tells us that it might have been like 1950s, could be before, without looking up at a catalog to see the style and everything. I really don't know off the top of my head. But if you're trying to find something historical that would fit your needs, then, uh, then this might be something really cool. But check, take a look at that. It's got a little handle so you can tip it, you can pour it, and it's got a spout. So that's, that's pretty cool. Just, just saw it, thought I had to share it with y'all. See what else we can find. All right, Theodore, what do you have here? The bellows. What are bellows for? I don't know. You don't know what bellows are for? Nope. Really? Yep. You like uh, blowing in, in the fire to get it going? Uh, no. Get the smoke in your face? No. You like burning up your hat, trying to fan it? No. All right. Well, well, bellows are used for uh, you know increasing the fire, and uh, we found this. Now this is not old. This is actually really really new, but um, it's in great shape. It's a good deal, and if you find something like this for your camping outfit, especially like an in place camping outfit, not like backpacking, then uh, bellows might be something that uh, you might find useful. You know, instead of blowing into it or using your hat or a pan or something to try to fan the flames, bellows are pretty sweet. So there you go. We found this out in the wild. A nice set of bellows for really, really cheap price. It's like nine bucks. So all right guys, let's let's move on. What did we find? A uh, stove. A stove? What kind of stove? We're we talking like a you know a Coleman stove? A little gas stove? Wood stove. A wood stove? No. Let's take a look. All right, Theodore. Uh, do you see this? Yeah. How, how does this work? Can you show us how this works? Right here, you can adjust the draft. Nice. And here, this is where you put the wood. Okay. And you would put a pipe here to regulate the smoke. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. That's a pretty cool. A, a small little wood stove. Now, this would be perfect for, for a medium-sized tent, huh? Mm -hmm. Might have to get up a few times to fill it back up with some wood. But, uh, yeah, this, this might be pretty nice. I think, I think we'll see if we can uh, snatch this up. It's pretty cool. Oftentimes, you get lucky in an antique stores. So right, what we see right there is a Bridgeport hatchet. Now, if you look at the price, it is overpriced compared to what you find on other sites like eBay and stuff. But over here, look at this. The seller must not realize what they have. If you compare the price of this particular hatchet to the ones on eBay, this one's $45. You're going to spend a lot more. And because that's a very early plum hatchet, not one from like the 1950s or 60s. So you just got to keep your eyes peeled and there's treasure to be found. We've got this graniteware coffee spout. Look at that. 
doesn't have a lid, but it has a little set with a little pop. See, it's got like a little handle and everything. Now, granite ware was extremely popular into the, the early 1900s. Now, this one here is like $15.50, which honestly isn't really that bad of a deal. When you guys go antiquing, a lot of times a dealers want to hike the price up. But the nice thing with eBay and, and some other avenues out there, antiques can be kind of competitive at times. And when you find stuff like this, where most of the people really don't care or really have any use for. That's the beauty of historical camping and early 20th century stuff because people tend to be focused on like glassware and other high-end pri priority uh, collectibles. But campware and earlier dishes and stuff that people are afraid of, they, they don't know anything about, you can get it for a good deal. So there you go, graniteware, pretty sweet. If you're interested in getting into early camp craft, you probably see these director chairs and you might pass them up because I just, you think of them as uh, more modern or contemporary, maybe like 1950s or later. But honestly, these director chairs were actually a design that was very popular in the early 1900s. And this one here, it's actually not a bad deal for uh, $35. And what about the ubiquitous picnic basket? So this one here is for $28, not too bad. It's a style that's been around for a while. There was a period of time during the late 1800s and the early 1900s where uh, this type of wickerware was extremely popular. You would see bamboo and other various types of plants where they were using thicker material to uh, show off. So this would pass if you're thinking about getting into an early 1900s civilian picnic impression. So having a uh, kerosene lanterns and barn lanterns, that's not uncommon to find. But every once in a while you get to find a really cool piece that uh, shows off some interesting characteristics of the time period, especially the technology of the time period. One of the things I ran across was this Dietz lantern. Now, at first glance, this doesn't seem like it's, uh, it's impressive at all, right? But we can take a look at some of the really cool features of the time period when you had that transition between electricity and gas-powered items. You know? So in the early 1900s, they started experimenting with the fisheye lenses. And those fisheye lenses made it possible to take light and make it go farther and spread out. So having that type of technology with a, a, you know, a candle or even with a, a kerosene lantern uh, went a long way of making the technology last just a little bit longer. So if we take a look at this. So here you can see the lens right inside of there. And I kind of wonder, I'm not uh, an expert on lanterns, but I kind of wonder if this piece here that rests on the lantern, because it just lifts, there's no lever or anything. But if you see that, if this part is just uh, a carryover from another model of a lantern, because it has no real purpose as it is, because it's resting directly on the font itself that you can see there. So this is really, really cool. And one of the things I love about this is if you were to turn this around, you would think that this is a, a reflector, but it's not. It's actually just to keep the light uh, away from your face so you can actually see ahead of you. It doesn't blind you as it's flashing back at you. But this little spring clip, I thought that was just really cool and ingenious. And of course you got your nail hook and then your bale to hold on to. Now this is $95, which is honestly probably a pretty good price. Again, I'm not an expert or a lantern collector, but I've seen one similar to this go for much more. But that is pretty cool. You don't get to see those prism lanterns very often. And of course, antique malls are a great place to find tons of primary sources. Like, look at this. This is just a great photo of a soldier with some awesome detail. You get an idea of how it wore the uniform, different uh, significations, and of course, just you know, even the hairstyle. Look at that, look at that. You get an idea of what the hairstyles were. This, this is fantastic, love it, love it, love it. Normally when I go antiquing, I don't have very much luck finding camp equipment, especially affordable camp equipment. Sometimes people think their old camp equipment is worth a, a strong mint when it's you know just like 10 years old and they want to sell it for brand new prices. Today, my boy and I 
We've actually had a really good day of finding pretty cool antique camping equipment. There's this whole pile right here we just stumbled upon, right? And it's got you know some of the old style aluminum cups that you would find in like the 1940s, 1950s camp kits and stuff. And of course you got your more modern black granite ware cup and you got some aluminum bowls and an old, let's see if I can get this, an old scout utensil kit. But what really caught my eye, because I got so many of these daggone cups, you know, I really don't need another one. But what caught my eye was this. Now this isn't like from the 1920s or anything. This is probably like 1960s or 70s or something. But this is a remake of the famous Sierra Cup. Now the Sierra Cup, if you didn't know, was given as a gift to the Sierra Club members in the early 1900s. And what was unique about it was this little handle. Now if you have a belt, you slip this in to your belt and wear the bull side towards your leg or something or towards your back end. That way you always have your cup on you as you go on hiking. And this whole set is $10. $10. That is a pretty sweet deal. So I'm going to go ahead and grab all this and if nothing else, I have a bunch of extra camp equipment to give my scouts or someone else. So keep dealing everybody. Well guys, my boy and I, we just got done uh, wrapping up our our awesome antiquing trip and uh, we got some cool finds. So ready to show them? Yep. What we got? All right. So what we have here, we got a Kelty bag that we bought for like 24 bucks, probably from like the 70s or 90s or something, right? But it's in really good unused shape and with my boy getting older and uh, Boy Scouts doing more hiking and stuff, you know, can't, can't pass that up, you know? And what do we have here, Theodore? different hand warmers. Now this was actually a pretty interesting find because uh, they're like $7.50 each and they're vintage from probably like the 1960s or 70s again but they're the uh, like the Zippo fuel hand warmers that were made by Aladdin uh, so it's not as common as some you know the, the Zippo hand warmers that you find today and when I was looking on eBay you know they were selling for twice that so pretty sweet deal. What else do we have? different tins with different spices and cooking ingredients. Okay, cool. So what kind of uh, spices do we have here, man? Now this is actually a, our whole purpose of coming into this. We were trying to look for containers to try to amp up our presentation when we do our camping stuff. So what kind of spice is this here? This is um, baking powder. Baking powder. Look at that. Like, you know, it's kind of worn down and everything, but guys, it has like a hundred and some odd year old baking powder in it. That's pretty cool. It's a weird bonus. I get giddy about that stuff. And what's this one here? This, He's sniffing it. <laughs> this one is ginger. Ginger. It still has ginger in it, right? Yep. So we got some ginger. What's this one? Cinnamon. Cinnamon. And last. This one took us a little while to read. It wasn't until we opened it up that we could really figure it out what it was. You remember what it was? No. It's cream of tartar. Cream of tartar. So cream of tartar was, and before baking powder, cream of tartar was the rising agent for biscuits and breads and things, you know, if you weren't going to use a yeast. So we have cream of tartar, and it's all kind of clumpy towards the bottom. And what I found out about these tins after opening them up, not all of them, but some of them, I think it's cinnamon. Can you take off, uh, it's this one here. Ah, what we have? So if we take a look at that, it actually has a cap that comes off. So it has the sifter. You can just kind of shake it out. So that was pretty cool. We, I kind of geeked out finding these. They were $5 each. Couldn't pass that up, right? Especially on eBay. You can find tens, usually in clumps and stuff. But since all of these were matching, all of these are ingredients that we would take out when we do our, our camping living history, it, it works out perfectly. What's another find we got? Um, we have a... Sorry, we're just going to let that pass. All right, so what else do we have? We have a cocoa tin. A cocoa tin. Now, this label is completely really worn off. So I'm going to have to replace the label. I'll talk to Sarge Vining or some of the guys over at Bannerman's or at the, the Sportsman's. 
Facebook page and stuff that I, I'm a frequent member of. But we could tell that it was cocoa because on the lid itself, it has cocoa powder. All right, so what was the last thing that we found in our haul today? We found a bunch of camping gear. All right, so we got a stack of camping dishes. How much was it? Um, around $10. So $10 for a stack of dishes. Now, if you remember earlier in this video, uh, this is the stack that I showed you guys, and I just could not pass up this uh, Sierra Club type cup. You know, like I have wanted one of these and they get kind of expensive on eBay for some reason. I don't know if they're really all that collectible or you know, nobody's making them or what the deal is, but they're, they're pretty expensive for really what they are. And for $10, you get the whole stack. I can take this to my scouts and they'll have some extra dishes or maybe I'll take it to one of my living history events and invite someone to come eat with us, you know? So, so having this was a pretty cool investment. Of course, you got these old school you know, aluminum cups that you would find in Scout kits. What really shocked me about this particular cup, it's all in the detail. If you look inside that cup, you see those rivets? That's unusual to find in this type of cup. So I am thinking this is kind of older. It's uh, made by Wherever, so it's got the Wherever cup, but even my Scout Wherever cups that were like this didn't have those really large rivets. So I'm thinking this is probably pretty early. And then you got you know, your contemporary one. This is like 1960s, really flimsy, crappy aluminum. Nothing like the old school aluminum that I prefer to use. So this is probably like made in Japan in the 60s or 70s, maybe even the 90s. Uh, but that this wherever cup, the, the different bowls that we have, which honestly, I didn't even check to see if any of these bowls are wherever. No, they're all, they're all probably like 70s Japanese aluminum. But those two cups, definitely worth the $10 by itself. We also got this little mixed bag of cutlery. They don't match, you know, but, you know, whatever. That's a pretty cool haul, huh? Yep. All right, now, my boy here. Whenever I go to a antique mall, all my children give me a groan. Because I, I honestly really like to go antiquing. It's a treasure hunt for me. I love doing it. Even just seeing the stuff. Even if I don't buy anything, you know, just being in a museum that you can go in and touch, I get excited and geeked out about. And I nerd out buying stuff like old containers with original stuff in it. Uh, it's weird, but that's what I like. And my boy here, he actually had fun with me today. I think it's the first time I've ever taken him antiquing, and he said he had fun. So... Welcome to the dark side, son. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll catch you later. I hope you enjoyed the video and give you some ideas. Keep a sharp eye out on your guys' antique shops, you know? And, uh, you know, if you ever want you to shoot it by me or I go on Bannerman's, go on the early 20th century group or the amalgamated group, I actually went on there and asked the guys several questions while I was in this antique store because... We all can't be knowledgeable about everything. You know, everybody kind of has their own interests and specialties. And in this hobby, there's so many people that's willing to go out of their way and help you out to make a wise purchase and have fun doing it. All right? So we'll catch you later. Give a kiss note to your loved ones. We'll catch you later. Take care. Bye.